All right, now for the fun lesson. Um, a lot of people like doing these. Some do get frustrated. I'm not going to sugarcoat and lie. Some people don't like it, but a lot of people do have fun with these. Um, you're going to be using the tool that I gave you in class, and if you weren't there, make sure you get one. Um, looks like this. Okay. Um, we'll talk about that in a second. But with constructions, you need three things. You need a pencil. You need a straight edge. And a compass. The tool that I gave you takes care of the first two things. Or sorry, not the first two things. Two of those things. Okay, this tool is called a contractor. It's kind of a mix of a compass and a protractor. Um, don't lose it. Okay, we will need it throughout the year, um, and they will cost. I think I heard three seventy-five. If you need a new one, okay, so almost four bucks. To, so don't lose it. Okay, um, first one was free, by the way. Sort of. Okay, so follow along as I copy this segment. Now, before I get started, really, I'm going to point out a couple things about the contractor. Um, I'm going to call this the circle thingy. Really accurate. Um, yeah, you could probably look it up in a dictionary. This is me being sarcastic. Um, but I'm going to call that my circle thingy. Okay, that's where you're going to either hold and move this, or you're going to, yeah, it's usually what you're going to do with it. You're going to put it on something and you're going to hold it there and now this thing moves. Which leads me to my biggest complaint about these things. Sometimes they stick. You'll, you'll try to move it and it sticks. Okay. So if that happens, I mean, I, this has worked for me. Kind of put it there and just you're kind of loosen it up off the paper. You're kind of wiggling it around, loosening it up. Okay. Um, but here we go. So I'm going to copy this segment. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over here and I'm going to draw a horizontal line and I want to make it definitely longer than that segment. Okay. Um, when I say copy the segment, I'm talking about I want the exact same length of a segment. It doesn't have to be necessarily at that angle, but it just has to be the same length. Okay. So I'm going to make that horizontal line and I'm going to make the left side my endpoint, representing this endpoint. So I'll call that A. Call this one A. Okay. Now I got to find where's B on here. I could take a guess. I could measure, but I we don't. Construction means you're not actually measuring; you're constructing it. Now here's where the contractor comes into play. So I'm going to put my circle thingy on A, and I'm going to slide this until one of those little dots lands right on endpoint B. So I see that it is about right there. That's my best one. And I can figure out what that number is by looking at these little red numbers. This is the row of 40s. So I have 41 here, so I'm going to count up. 42, 43, 44, I see 45. Now before I pick up my contractor, I'm going to make sure I didn't slide my contractor. My circle thing is still on the end point, so I'm in good shape. Okay. So I'm at 45. Remember that number? So you're not remembering a bunch of numbers. I would take that off, and the first thing I'd do is I'd write 45. Okay, call that endpoint B. What you're going to do now is you're going to take your circle thingy and put it on the other A endpoint. And now I'm going to go to 45 again, so I'm going to find it, 41, 42, 43, 44. Here's 45, and I'm just going to make a little arc that intersects my horizontal line. Okay, that was 45. Now the intersection represents, right, two lines intersect at a point that it represents my endpoint B, and now AB is the exact same length as the original segment. Okay, Go ahead and try that one on your own. If you don't remember what I did, it's nice, you can pause and rewind. Okay, I'm going to copy this angle. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw another horizontal line. Again, I would make it longer than this one then it'd be much longer, but you don't want it to be shorter. It doesn't matter if it's longer, but it does matter if it's shorter. I'm going to make my vertex the left side, just like it is here. 
we'll call it, I don't know, V for vertex. Okay? So I just made horizontal line. Now I'm going to go back to the original angle, put my circle thingy on the vertex, and I'm going to pick a number. I would pick, usually in the 30s or 40s is a good number, maybe 50s. I'm going to go with 40 here, and I'm going to make an arc that hits both rays of the angle. Now, I'm going to take it off and I'm going to write 40 down real quick because I don't want to remember, I don't want to forget that number. If I use a different number, it can mess things up. So now I'm going to go over, back over to my, the one that I'm constructing, put the circle thingy on the vertex, use the same number 40. Now I don't have two rays, but I'm going to make one. So I'm going to make an arc that will intersect my second ray once I make it. You're probably thinking, well, how do I know where that's at? Well, you can kind of get an idea. Look at your angle that you're making. My second ray is going to be about in here. Just make sure it goes further. The one down here on, that you're going to try on your own, you're going to want to make your arc a little bit bigger because it's, it's a bigger angle. This is an obtuse angle. It's a bigger angle than this one. Okay? So, recapping what I've done so far. Horizontal line. Bring it over here. Make an arc. Bring it back over here. Make the same arc. Now this is where it gets a little tricky. A lot of people forget this part. You're going to take your circle thingy to the intersection of the arc you made and the first bottom ray. I'm going to put my circle thingy here. Okay? And now I'm going to turn my paper. So I'm going to caution you here. I'm turning my paper so I can see better. Circle thingy is at the intersection there. And now I'm going to move my contractor until that circle is over the intersection of the other ray and my arc. For this one, it looks like 23 for me. Okay, if you use a bigger number, I'm gonna write that down, 23. Okay, if you use a bigger number for your original arc, that number's probably gonna get bigger. So, now I'm gonna come over here. I wanna find that spot on this angle. Well, if this is the vertex, that spot is right and now I'm going to go to 23, and I'm going to make a little arc. I'm going to turn it around here. Again, intersection of two of these arcs is a point. That represents the second point on my ray. So now I'm making ray V, I don't care what you call it, W. I'm making ray VW, which is representing the second ray now don't just draw the line. Okay, you have a straight edge right here. Use it. And there's my copied angle. Okay, what that means, if they're copied, that means this angle here and this angle here are exactly the same. Giving you another one to try down there. Backside, constructing bisectors. Okay, so a bisector is very similar to a midpoint. People get these mixed up a lot, especially when we get to proofs. But I want to point out a couple differences before we start constructing them that hopefully these help you throughout the semester, these differences between a bisector or what bisect means and midpoint. So a midpoint is on a line. It is a point on a line. While a bisector goes through a line, okay, notice the distinction. Difference number two, midpoint is a noun, while bisect is a verb. So if I'm bisecting something, I'm actually, it's actually doing something. A midpoint is a something, it's a noun. Midpoints are specific to lines. Angles cannot have midpoints. Lines are the only things that can have midpoints. Line segments, to be specific, completely accurate, line segments. While a bisector can be found on lines and angles. All right, And you're, we're going to be doing bisectors here on both line segments and angles. Okay, so first we're going to jump into the segment one. 
Not too difficult here. For this one, you want to put your circle thingy on either end point. doesn't really matter which one. And you're going to pick a number that's going to give you an arc that is over halfway. Okay, so halfway. So I'm just eyeballing it. It's about right there. I'm going to pick a number that's definitely more than that. So I'm going to go 40. You're going to see that I like 40. I use it a lot. But you don't want to be too big because you're going to get off the page if you get too big. So if you go 50 and 60, you might get too big. 50 might be okay. 60, probably pushing it. Okay, so I'm going to use 40. And I'm going to make an arc. And notice what this would do. If you'd keep going, you'd make a circle. But I'm going to make an arc like that. Now I'm going to flip my paper over. Heads up here, flipping it over. And I'm going to put my circle thingy on the other end point. So if you started on the other end point, if you start on the right one, move it to the left. If you start on the left, move it to the right. And I'm going to use the same number. It's got to be the same number. So 40. I chose 40, so I have to use 40 again. Okay, make an arc. I'm going to flip it back around. So I've got two arcs that meet twice. You see how they meet here? And they also meet here. If yours don't meet twice, you're either too big or too small with your number choice. They need to meet twice. Or if they meet way up here and way down here, you're probably too big with your number choice. Okay? It's not wrong. It's just going to make your page look crazy. What I'm going to do is I'm now going to connect those two points using my straight edge. Okay? And I just, this line right here, That is my perpendicular bisector. Okay, so I'm going to highlight that one in pen here. That's the thing I'm trying to construct. All right. A lot of people don't see it, so I'm going to go in a different color even to show you. This right here is what we were trying to construct. I wasn't constructing arcs. I use the arcs to help me construct that line. Now what does that line do? What are its qualities or characteristics in relation to the original segment? Well, two parts. Perpendicular. That means this line, this green line here, is perpendicular to this segment, which means they meet at a 90 degree angle. That's the first part. Second part is bisect, which means this line cut the original segment in half which means this piece is congruent to this piece. That's what a perpendicular bisector does. Okay. Um, and it is a good idea to put those markings to show that you understand what you just constructed. What I'm talking about is that marking and these markings. That shows you that you know it's perpendicular and that it's a bisector. Okay. Last one is an angle bisector. Okay, so this one, for anybody that's right-handed, can be a little bit tricky because you're kind of doing backwards what you want to do. It's kind of, you almost have to go left-handed if you leave your paper as is. So flip it over. That's, what I, that's my way around it. And lefties, basically do the opposite of what I'm doing. If, so on this one, for lefties, this one's going to be harder. Again, flip it around. Lefties, this one will be pretty easy for you. But if it's not easy, try flipping your paper over. Should make it easier. Circle thingy on the vertex. I'm going to make an arc that intersects both um, rays. I'm just going to choose 30 this time. Okay, so this intersects once, intersects twice. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my circle thingy and put it on that intersection. I'm going to use 30 again. You wouldn't have to, but it's a good idea just to, so you don't mess it up. Use that same number. So I'm going to use 30, and I'm going to make a little arc right there. And I'm going to move my circle thingy over to the other intersection of the ray and the arc. And I'm going to use 30 again. That little X right there represents the intersection of that little X represents a point on the ray that is my angle bisector. So I'm going to connect that 
vertex to that point. And I just made my angle bisector. Now what does that mean? How do I know it's an angle bisector? What does an angle bisector do? It makes that angle right there equal to that angle right there. Okay. And that's the end of constructions. Again, if you didn't catch something, rewind. Watch it again. I'm not, there's really not a second way of teaching this. Um, so this is one of those things where you just kind of have to watch the video and work through it. Okay.